Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, California. It's another great day on the Moment of Breakthrough television broadcast. I am Pastor Isaac Shema Bukon from Dominion Life Christian Center here in San Ramon, California. We are going to be looking into the Word of the Lord. And uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been teaching on overcoming the spirit of fear. And we're going to be doing the same thing on this uh, broadcast today. Overcoming the spirit of fear. Because fear is a spirit. Uh, fear is not, a, is not an emotional uh, pleasure is a spirit. The Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And this is very, very important because uh, fear, uh, fear, it's the opposite of faith. And you and I know that it takes faith to receive anything from the Lord. No, we need faith. So we must do away with fear. So if we don't if we live in fear, uh, we are going to have challenge with our life of faith in God. So I'm, go I'm going to be looking side by side, fear and faith. We look at why faith and why fear. Hallelujah. Don't forget, faith is a spiritual force that ushers us into the realms of the supernatural or the realms of divinity. Faith makes us, faith allows us to operate like God. Uh, and uh, and, and, and uh, that wasn't an accident. That wasn't a, I didn't misspeak. And we're going to look into scripture. Faith allows us to operate in God's realm, in God's class. Because I'm, I'm going to show you from scriptures. Faith makes all things possible for the believer. Because the Bible says, with faith, all things are possible. All things. So, uh, uh, absolute faith makes all things possible. Now, I, and I know if you are a Christian or, or you are wondering, uh, how come this has not been possible? How come that has not been possible? Or, indeed, is it true that all things can be possible? Now, if things are not working or things are not possible, it's because the faith is not absolute. Everything succumbs to the force of absolute faith. And you know, uh, uh, the, the scripture can be broken. That is to say, uh, all things are possible to them that believes. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe all things. So, uh, what we have not been able to accomplish is not because faith cannot deliver them. It's because uh, our faith is questionable. If we can believe, all things are possible. So, faith makes us operate in the class of God. If you believe, all things are are possible. That, that's, that's what the Bible says. So, faith allows us, it gives us access to operate in the class of God. That's why uh, a life of faith uh, naturally equals a life of exploit. If you live the lifestyle of faith, absolute faith, no, because faith is the catalyst for, for living from breakthrough to breakthroughs. When you live the lifestyle of faith, no, heaven's response to you. You live from breakthrough to breakthrough. Now, uh, le let me digress to say, okay, what is faith? Faith is living the word of God. Faith is living by the word. Faith is patterning your life based on what the Word of God says, without question. Faith is obeying the Word. Faith is doing the Word. And uh, I have a word for somebody on the, uh, now. Um, if you want to change your tomorrow, you want to change your future, 
it is not a function of, of, of uh, intellect or of the, or of, a, of, of the mind. It is a function of what you are doing today. If you start obeying the word of God today, you have started changing your tomorrow. Yeah, because you have started living the lifestyle of faith. So faith is doing the word of God, doing what the word of God says. Or a great man of God puts this way many years back, I had him. He said, faith is behaving the word. Faith is behaving, acting, living by the word. Praise the Lord. So uh, you, you, it is true that we have a glorious destiny. We have a glorious future in God because of the finished work of Calvary. But faith is required. Faith is the catalyst for the life of exploit, for the life of breakthroughs, from breakthroughs. Now, faith is a spiritual force or a spiritual uh, uh, ingredient that you and I need to live above the situations and circumstances of life. Now, uh, the Bible describes, the, the Bible speaks a lot in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews 11 and verse 30, the Bible says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. So their faith brought down the wall of Jericho. Now, by faith, the Bible says, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those things. So the Bible began to talk about, uh, about that. But in verse 32, Hebrews 11 and verse 32, the Bible says, And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and also of David and Samuel and the prophets. So all the giants in scriptures, the, their exploits were based on faith. That's what the Bible is saying. Now it says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms? So they overthrew nations. They win wars, battles by faith. Now, the Bible says, they stop the mouth of lions. They stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, and escape this world. Now, you read, uh, you read up to the end of that chapter. So, all these are exploits of faith by uh, biblical giant or giant in the Bible. So, the Bible says, by faith, it's all by faith. So now, with, with, with faith, it is impossible to live a fearful life. So fear will stop you from becoming the best that God has created you to be. Fear won't just make you move forward in life. Fear makes you stay stagnant on a place. Just wondering why everything is wrong, when nothing is wrong. Now, you are a victim of what you fear. Whatever you fear, you become a victim of it. Now, in Job chapter 3 and verse 25, the Bible says, For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. The Bible says, feared. So Job feared those things ahead of time. So they happened to him. For the things I greatly feared. Now, he said, and what I dreaded has happened to me. So that tells me that uh, fear exposed him. Uh, fear made him vulnerable. He became vulnerable to the attack of Satan. So the things that I greatly fear has come upon me. That's what he said. The things I dreaded has happened. So it won't be long if you don't stop the hold of fear against your life, those things that you fear begin to manifest in your life. And I believe that is why the Lord is bringing this world your way. So you have to stop the spirit. You, you have to consciously say, from now on, fear, you cannot hold me. You are not going to, uh, you are not, you are not going to have the best of me. No way. No. You, you're going to live by the word of the Lord. Now, fear is a non-existing lies of the devil. He, he, he paint, fear paints a very gloomy and hopeless picture of situations. Now, a, a wise man once said this, that if, if fear knocks on your door, 
you ask faith to go open the door. And when faith opens, you find out there was no one at your door. So fear does not fear is something that does not exist. Fear is something that Satan uh, uh, has orchestrated to make life difficult for the believer. That is say, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, so it is not from God, so it's from the devil. Now he said, but of power. So what you have is power. What you have is law. What you have is a sound mind. And in case somebody is here right now, you are with me on this broadcast, and you have challenges in your mind. You are always thinking about negative thought. Pastor, he say, the Bible says, God has only given you a sound mind. A mind of all possibilities. Where whatever you believe is possible. Hallelujah. So fear is from the devil again, I repeat. Fear is negative. Fear is is negative fear is negative every negative thought is a product of fear every negative thought now fear let me tell you some of the ways fear operates uh, every <laughs> fear expects bad things all the time you expect bad things to happen fear expect evil things to happen uh, if you go, if you get a call from your doctor, or, or you, although doctors don't always call. Now, if you get a letter from your doctor, or you run a test, or just some physical, fear is suggesting to you something has gone wrong. Fear is telling you it is negative. You are about to to hear a bad news. Now, that's what fear does. Fear tells you you are, you are going to be fired in your place of work. Fear tells you you might not be able to make it through your probationary period. Fear tells you there is no way you can survive in this place. That's what fear does. So fear is negative. There is nothing positive about fear. That is how you know it's from the devil. Now, what does, what does it mean? Fear strips the believer. It strips anyone, any of its victim, of the opportunity to live a life of exploit. Because if you live in fear, you are always defending yourself. You always have to be on the defensive. You always have to try to be okay. Even though you are okay, there is nothing wrong with you. Now, faith says all things are possible. Fear says nothing is possible. Nothing will work. Hallelujah. Now, faith says you will live and not die. Faith says with long life you have been satisfied by God. No, but fear says you can die any time. Fear says that sickness is going to live on, lead on to death. Fear suggests some people in the family died young. You're going to die young. What's any different? You, why will your home be different? That's what fear says. So fear is always negative. So every time something speaks in your, you, you hear the voice that is negative, that, that you become oppressed, it is not from the Lord. It is from the devil. Now, also let's know this. Fear comes by what we hear, by what we see. And the Bible makes that clear. That's why the Bible tells us, for we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. So living by faith is living by God's word. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, what is walking or living by sight? By living, believing what you hear, what you see, what you smell, what you feel, and what everything in the realms of the sense. For we walk by faith and not by sight. You know why is this? Because there is nothing in the realm of the sense that is positive. You are going to smell bad stuff, negative news. You are going to hear negative reports. You are going to feel something bad. So you walk by faith and not by sight. Now you are going to see things that will make, that will make it difficult for you to live a life of exploit. In Matthew chapter 14, there is a story there. Matthew 14 from verse 23. The Bible says, and when he had sent the multitude away, he was talking about Jesus. 
he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there in verse 24. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. So he was on a boat. Tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in verse 25, the Bible says, I'm reading Matthew 14 and 25. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. You know, Jesus, he, 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 he was showing them a miracle. Now, Jesus was walking on the sea. The Bible says he walked on the sea. Now, Jesus was demonstrating here what we can do with faith. He was demonstrating it, literally speaking. Now, now you know what is this telling me right now? In case you are here, you are afraid of, uh, of uh, riding or being on a boat or being on a ship or something. Now, if you are afraid, that won't be a problem. Because if, if anything happens to the boat, you just walk out of, the, of, of that thing. Because Jesus was showing us that you can walk on the boat, now, on, on, on the sea. Now, the Bible says Jesus was walking on the sea. In verse 26, and when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were troubled. They were troubled because they saw somebody walking on the sea. They are saying to themselves, it is a ghost. And they cried out of fear. Now, have you realized that when something strange, when something new happens, your first instinct is to be afraid. So it is not of God. The Bible says they cried out for fear. Now, the question is this. Why didn't they cry out in um, in excitement. Why did they cry out in ex excitement? In, in shock, surprise. Who is this? The Bible says they cried out in fear. Verse 27, the Bible says, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is high. So in other words, relax, take it easy. It is high. Jesus spoke. Do not be afraid. Now, in verse 28, the Bible says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water as well. In other words, if it is you, let me also try it. The Bible says, So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So the Bible says, He walked. So he already started walking. In verse 30, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. So he walked on the water. He was walking on the water until he began to look at the circumstance. He began to look at the wind. He allowed his sight, the realm of, of his sense, to take control of him. The Bible says, when he looked at the wind, all of a sudden, down on me, it's windy, I'm going to sink. The Bible says, he began to sink. But look at what Jesus says. Then he screamed, Lord, save me. Now, in verse 31, the Bible says, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So that, 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 that let us understand that he began to sing because he doubted. He doubted because he looked at the wind. So when you feed yourself from the natural sense, or from the realms, from this, uh, from the realms of the senses, you are going to struggle to live the life of faith. You are going to live in fear. So, to overcome the spirit of fear, you have to live the life of absolute faith. Hallelujah. When there is faith, don't forget, there cannot be fear. Now, the Bible says something. So, why will Satan bring fear? Because life is a warfare. Our uh, effort, everything we do to become the best of God in our lives is an adventure of warfare. Because we will have to contend with an enemy. Now, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, For a great and effective door has opened to me. There are many adversaries. A great and effective door has opened to me. 
there are many adversaries. There are many enemies. Great door, great opportunities. So what does that tell me? As many doors of opportunity, as many enemies. Because Satan will always fight. He will always contest. He will only contend with the will of God in our lives. So there is warfare because of Satan. So it has nothing to do with what you have done wrong or what you have not done right. So, but the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world of our faith. So faith has overcome the world. So when you live the lifestyle of faith, you live above the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Overcoming the spirit of fear. You live in faith, you live above fear. You live in faith, you live above fear. Now, remember, fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. Hallelujah. So, uh, what you become in life is what you overcome. Life does not, and life will not grant you or give you what you what you what belongs to you this life will not automatically release unto you what you qualify for no uh, or you desire no you will have to contend you will have to overcome you will have to fight for it you have to fight for your earth you have to fight for your finances you have to fight for your family because satan is out to tear everything down I would say the thief comes not, John chapter 10 verse 10, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He has a ministry to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he wakes up every day looking to fulfill this ministry. That is why as a Christian, when battles come your life, when, when you find yourself in warfare, it is not something new. All you need to do is to take on, as the Bible says, the spiritual hammer, the whole armor of God, so that you can be able to stand, I would say, in the evil day. Hallelujah. But it's also good for you to understand the strength and the weapons of your enemy. So uh, fear is one of the strategies, or is a satanic strategy. It's a, it's a strategy of Satan to beat a Christian in warfare. When he brings fear, you cannot have faith. When you don't have faith, you cannot win any battles. Hallelujah. So you must do everything to keep your faith. You must do everything to keep standing in faith. Now, Jesus was admonishing Peter. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith fails not. So if your faith is alive, fear will be far away from your life. And when you don't live in fear, you're going to live in boldness. When you live in boldness, you're going to live a victorious life. In other words, you will win your battles. I, I want to tell someone, you can win all your battles. You can overcome those difficulties. Now, what you are going to right now is just a passing moment. It's going to expire. Now, it's not going to be there forever in the precious name of Jesus. So you must just hold on and don't be fearful. Don't think about the worst. Don't think it is the end of life. Don't think this is going to be the end of the story. Don't let the Satan, don't let Satan tell you that this is all about you. You will never come out of it. It's a lie of the devil. You are going to come out of these problems in Jesus' precious name. I believe God is speaking to someone. Whatever is going on in your life, I'm going to pray with you. Because Jesus died so that you can overcome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome. So Jesus in faith already overcame on our behalf. All we need to do is to receive it, accept it, and walk in these realities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, 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 but it's good for us to know all these are blessings. They are meats. They are food of the Spirit. So your spirit must be alive before you can even talk about faith. Now, uh, your spirit can only be alive when your spirit is regenerated by salvation, when you give your life to Jesus. So if you have never given your life to Jesus, or you had in the past, uh, due to some pressures of life or, or some circumstances, 
you you just realize you wandered away. Now it is time for you to rededicate your life to Jesus. So if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you have never prayed the salvation prayer, I'm gonna you have an opportunity to pray today, and it's the best decision you can make in your lifetime. It's the one single decision that becomes a catalyst to all of you. Now, the Bible says it doesn't profit a man anything if he gains this whole world and loses his soul. So, by salvation, you secure your eternity. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is coming back again. Also, you become a member of God's family even here on earth. So, God can begin to fight your battles for you. So, you become, you, you, you'll be standing in the position of advantage where you win all your battles. You are going to win those battles in Jesus' name. So, just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross of Calvary. And you rose on the third day. Thank you for dying for me. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. I renounce Satan, sin, and all its works. Write my name in the book of life. I am born again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If I've prayed that prayer, congratulations to you. You have just given your life to Jesus or you have just rededicated your life to Jesus. The next thing you must do is to find a Bible-believing church and submit yourself to be a member because you now need to grow in God's Word because your growth in the Word of God and the knowledge of God is your spiritual strength that keeps you standing even in the journey of life. And I want to pray with you. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I come against every old of the spirit of fear in the life of your people. I pray deliverance from this spirit. Set them free. Let faith replace fear in their lives. And as many as are looking and expecting a breakthrough from you, Lord, I agree with him or her in faith that this is their moment of breakthrough. In Jesus' precious name, I decree a change and a turnaround in that situation. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me on this broadcast. The Lord bless you. See you next time. I'm excited to let you know that Dominion Life Christian Center is finally coming to San Jose. We are going to be inaugurating our church, Dominion Life Christian Center, the home of breakthrough in the city of San Jose, California, on the 6th, Saturday, the 6th of October at 5 p.m. The address is the South Side Community Center, 5585 Cotter Road in San Jose. Regular Sunday service begins on Sunday the 7th. The inauguration service is on Saturday. I'm inviting you, I'm inviting everyone. Please tell your friends, your family members, come and be part of these occasions. The city of San Jose is about to experience the power of God like never before. Thank you. I will see you there. I want to invite you to our Sunday services. The Dominion Celebration Service is at 10 a.m. And on Wednesday, the communion service is at 7 p.m. every Wednesday. Come and your life will never remain the same.